Hey y'all, it's Jacqueline, and I ended up with way too much eye makeup on today. You ever have those days when you have like this look envisioned, like I was going for this deep burgundy in the corner and like a gold wash over the lid, and then I ended up looking like more prostitute-y than I ever want to be. So we're going to shoot this video anyways because talking about things I don't care for, I'm going to go through the products I regret buying. Alrighty guys, so I have quite a few items and I've been collecting them for the past few months in my Perrier Jouet champagne bucket that I uh, borrowed from a bar I used to work at like three, four years ago. I just thought it was so pretty with all the flowers. It's a little beat up now. But anyways, I have been collecting the products and there is quite a few, so I want to go through this pretty quickly, just give you the high points um, and let you guys know why they did not work for me in particular. Um, most of these come from brands that I love. They have other items that I adore. Just these particular items did not work well and I will let you know why. So I figured let's just start with makeup. And the very first one, and I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be really, really disappointed to hear that, the Makeup Forever HD Foundation. And since doing some research, like I heard just raves about it and that's why I went and bought it. And then since it hasn't turned out so well for me, I've done some more research and there's actually a lot of people who keep having the same issue I do and that it breaks me out like no other. Every single day I wear it, it clogs up all my pores, breaks me out horribly. An incredibly expensive high-end product. It was over $50. I believe it was $52 at Sephora. And it broke me out. I stuck it in my makeup collection and I haven't touched it since and this just pisses me off every time I look at it to be honest with you um, because I can deal with like some drugstore things not turning out well I spent you know 10 bucks on it but 50 bucks oh it just ooh, pisses me off okay next is a drugstore product and that is the elf HD powder and obviously everyone knows it's a dupe for the makeup forever HD powder translucent powder it is translucent in color that's the one I got and the thing is it just doesn't blend well it doesn't blend for crap for me it ends up sitting on top of my skin it looks incredibly evident it looks super super cakey and I'm just I'm not having that I have another product that people are probably gonna be upset about but it is the naked flushed palette I think this is the original one um, honestly okay it's the ones with these colors in it, it I looked on the back it doesn't have a name I, I think this is the very first one to be honest with you and I haven't gone back for any others because this one sucked so bad um, it just gives no pigment whatsoever like at all I have no color payoff on the blush or the bronzer when you like go to blend it out see and it's like gone um, now the highlighter isn't actually too bad and I guess that's why I'm keeping this product around that and it was like a $20 product and I don't want to let go of it but it just plain doesn't work for me. Okay, next a couple of drugstore NYX products and these are the glitter cream palettes. Um, I have this one in Sweet Chocolate Browns and this one which is a little beat up in uh, Ocean Breeze. And the thing is, like, I thought they were really pretty to wear. Like, this, I got this, like, when I was bartending. Like, it'd be pretty at night. Like, in the bar, it would show up. The problem with these is that it's just an overspray of glitter. Like, yeah, the glitter looks great on the ones I haven't messed with. But this one I wanted to wear, like, the deep gray glitter. Um, as soon as you get that overspray off, it's basically like a Vaseline gel inside and it is disgusting it never sets it makes your eyelids stick together and it doesn't even have that much glitter in it so seriously skip these all together loose glitters are so so much better I'm just gonna trash these after this video all right so everyone trashed this product I hated it too and it's the Too Faced better than false lashes lash duo system um, this is step one and three which is the mascara and then this is the nylon fibers and you just brush them on the lashes between uh, steps one and three. And I've actually considered keeping this, and I don't, I haven't tried it yet. It's just so far down on my priorities list. But to try the fibers with a different mascara and see if maybe they work, I don't know. This mascara will glue your freaking eyelashes together. Like, oh, I hate that. I hate it so much. It's just so goopy. I mean, look, you see it just like gooping off the end. Yeah, so goopy, so sticky. Oh, 
never dries, never sets, just goops up, and I cannot stand it. And it's so disappointing because Too Faced is one of my favorite brands. They usually have amazing products. I haven't tried anything from theirs I don't like except this mascara. Second mascara is the Lorac 3D Multiplex Lashes. And as you can see, it's actually a bit worn because I kept trying it, kept throwing it in my makeup bag because Lorac, again, one of my favorite, all-time favorite cosmetics companies. And this just does not do it for me. It clumps my lashes like no other. It has a curved applicator, not that that matters, but it just clumps them. It does not separate them. And usually that's why I like these synthetic kind of bristle spiky brushes like the They're Real, which is one of my favorites. Usually they give me great separation and great length, and this one just did not. It's just too wet. It clumps. Ugh, I gotta get rid of it. All right, baby lips. I know there's a ton of like preteen girls who are gonna yell at me for this, but they're just worthless to me. Um, I, this is the Dr. Rescue, the clear one. It dries out my lips. It doesn't even moisturize for like three minutes and you need to reapply. They're just crap. You get what you pay for and I'm not buying any more of these. Moving on to hair care. This one, Rusk, the Thermal Flat Iron Spray. Um, this is the full size and it is like so heavy because I only used it like two times. Um, I figured this would be like the Chi spray, which I love everything from that line. It makes your hair really silky and defends against heat. This is not the case. Basically, this is almost like a hairspray. It's sticky and tacky and just like it sticks like a hairspray. And if I wanted hairspray, I'd buy hairspray. I don't want hairspray to protect my hair from the flat iron. This one is another one that really, really pisses me off because this was a $55 item. It is from DDF, which is a great brand. I loved their exfoliating moisturizer. I know that sounds like totally can't go together, but it was a moisturizer with 10% glycolic acid and it just was minty cool. It did great things for my skin, really helped my acne, and they discontinued it. So when I found this glycolic 10% exfoliating control gel, I thought this might be a close um, second to it. I've barely used it. I don't know why I keep it around. Basically just because I've spent so much dang money on it and I want it to laugh in my face every time I open my cosmetics drawer. But it's not a moisturizer. It's like the goopiest gel you've ever seen. Oh, it's like dried over. It's like the goopiest gel you've ever seen. It just like, ugh, can you see that? How it like strings out? Ugh, it's just goopy and nasty and gross. And I didn't even notice that it did that much for my skin. So totally pissed that I spent $55 plus shipping on that item. Last item I actually don't like because of the product that's in it, not because of the actual formula or anything like that. Um, this is a skin lightening complex and I thought it would do well to lighten my acne scars. The thing is it has hydroquinone in it, hydroquinone, hydroquinone, however you say it. And and it is, it is in most skin lightening treatments, acne scar treatments, things like that that are supposed to break up the dark spots on your skin, um, except it causes cancer. And it has been well researched and well known that this is a big carcinogen. And I'm sorry, I just can't do it. I would rather have acne scars to the day I die than to get cancer. Okay, and the last product is actually a jewelry piece. And this is a gorgeous necklace by the line Sloan Ranger. Really cute, has a little horseshoe, which I love. It's a little symbol of good luck and a bow. And I actually have a few from this line. I have a bracelet. I have actually a couple of bracelets, a couple of rings, um, and a couple of necklaces. And I can wear the rings and bracelets just fine. The necklace uh, gives me a rash. I don't know what they made this with, but it is totally disappointing because I love Sloan Ranger. I love All for Color. I'll link them below. They are an awesome company. We used to work with them. Really, really cool stuff for a great price. And it's just disappointing. Uh, that I can't wear this because I love it and I love horseshoe jewelry. Alrighty guys, so that is it. My junk bucket is empty. So let me know what you think. Did you like the products that I don't like? Do you agree with some of these that they were not good for you as well? Um, again, I love a lot of these brands. They put out great, great products, but just these products in particular were not cutting it for me.
Uh, so let me know what you think in the comments below. Give me a like if you like the format of this video, and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. I put out new content multiple times a week, and I would love to have you hang out and watch videos and stick around and be a friend of mine. Uh, remember that you can follow me elsewhere if you're into it. I am at Fort Worth Famous on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. And remember, of course, that you are already famous in your hometown, and I will see you guys in the next video. Love y'all. Bye, y'all.